So I'll start off by saying I am 14 years old. I'm from a hilled village in England, and recently I've been doing a project on urban legends. The assignment was set to do in class. Most people did Bloody Mary, and I personally did Slenderman. I've experienced many paranormal things throughout my life. I even knew a person who died after what's assumed to be a possession. This is a whole new level for me, because it's not just the normal spirits that I encounter every so often. This is something entirely new. A creature that resembles a human, but isn't. Anyways, I'll get back to why my school project is relevant. There were two students which did black-eyed children. This was cool when it came to presenting. I started to feel sick and my stomach started churning. I just thought I had a sickness bug, so I asked to go to the reception and ended up passing out on the way. My mom took me to a doctor to see if there was anything seriously wrong, but the doctor just said it might be a viral infection. It was probably a coincidence, but I just feel like I could have been something else. Go forward two weeks later, exactly. I was walking my dog Marley. I was going through the woods since there's a thin path that leads through to a golf course surrounded by wooded hills. I was walking through there with my dog when suddenly it started getting chilly and a bit windy. A bit of gravel flew into my eye, and that was when I realized there was someone in the path in a white dress covered in mud. It was a girl, and I noticed as I walked further that she was really pale. I was about three meters away from her when all of a sudden my dog cowered away. I stopped and tried to calm him, but no matter what I did, he wouldn't go further. The girl was further away, and it wasn't until I tried to tap her on the shoulder that I realized she was only about 12. I hesitated, and I went to tap her. She turned her entire body around in a very shifty movement. She turned her head first and did the same with the rest of her body, ending with her feet. It gave me shivers, and I stuttered as I spoke to her. Her eyes were black and looked like marbles. I was asking, are you okay? But before I could finish my sentence, she asked, can I touch your dog? I actually would have made me giggle if it wasn't so shaky. She was so direct with everything she asked. I said no, and she kept asking, can I touch your... with each of my items, and eventually she asked to hold my hand. It took me by surprise, so obviously I said no. This is where it got confusing. She started bawling her eyes out talking about how she needed to hold my hand. I eventually started running away, and that's when she actually started crawling over to me and tried touching my dog. Marley at this point was literally wincing from fear. I looked back behind me, and all I saw was the girl on the ground pulling at her hair, and that's when she suddenly disappeared. I looked back a second time, and it looked like she was literally sinking into the ground. She was just going down. I ran home, and ever since then, I haven't experienced anything else. I also haven't been anywhere near the path when walking my dog again. Hey everybody, my name is Kevin, and I read on here more than once about people encountering these black-eyed children. I personally find it creepy as fuck, and pray to God I never encounter such evil. It would be terrifying. The only thing about these encounters is everyone seems to have a natural instinct to not let them into the house. Thank God. So I've been curious as to what exactly happens if you do let them in. Well, I was visiting my girlfriend Mandy's great aunt in a psychiatric ward, an overheard man mumbling about children with black eyes and that no one listens to him. Immediately my head snapped his way and he caught my attention, so I went over and had a little chat with him as they were all eating lunch. I'll do my best to retell the story he told me word for word. As I said, Mandy and I were in the psychiatric ward when I first heard the man. He was sitting at the next table, and I could hear him mumbling to himself while picking at his arms. He looked as if he was drugged pretty heavily, so I guess there's no way to know how true his story is. I'm just going to repeat what he told me. Excuse me, sir. Did you say something about children with black eyes? I leaned over and asked him quietly. His head snapped straight towards me, and he stared at me intently. He was probably around 65 years old, and the years were not good to him. He had huge bags under his eyes. There were dark spots covering his face and arms. His hair, clumpy, ratted, mess, with knots sticking out everywhere. The only thing kept up on him was his lack of beard. Honestly, with his overall mess of an appearance, it looked strange how his face was so cleanly shaven. Who are you, boy? He asked, snapping from my judgmental trance. My name is Kevin, and I thought I heard you mumbling something about black-eyed children, I asked again. Yes, 
Uh, I suppose I did, didn't I? He looked confused. I've heard of these children before and was wondering, could you maybe give me a little information about them? If you've seen them or know anyone who has, any information on them really would be great. You don't want to meet them, boy. They're pure evil. He looked at the ground, shaking his head. So I've heard. How have you heard of them, sir? I asked, hopefully. They ruined my whole life and got me locked in this place, he shouted, startling me. Shh! I frantically looked around, noticing a guard slowly stand up. I waved them away, letting them know everything was fine, flashing them a smile. Please, sir, can you tell me something more about them? I want to know what to do if I ever encounter them, I pleaded. That's very simple, boy. Never let them in. No matter how distressed or nice they seem, never let them in, he said with a lowered voice. Well, do you know what happens if you do? I asked, raising an eyebrow. Son, I made the horrible choice of letting those demons in my house back in 1992. A tear rolled down his cheek. Holy shit, I finally found someone claiming to have let one of those kids in and he's alive. This could be my only chance to find out what happens. I have to hear the story. Please, sir, will you tell me exactly what happened? He looked at me for a few seconds and then around the room. He looked incredibly nervous like someone was going to come after him if he told me. After what felt like an eternity, he finally looked me in the eyes and slowly shook his head yes. This is the point where I will stop telling the story like a conversation. I'll just tell what he told me to save time and a lot of typing. It was November 19, 1992. I was watching television downstairs while my wife, Helen, was asleep upstairs, as was my two children, Mary and Bradley. I was watching an old horror movie called The Evil Dead. It was probably around 1.30, and after the movie, I planned on going upstairs to bed. All of a sudden, I heard someone pounding on my front door. Who the fuck? I remember getting pretty angry because who in the hell would be pounding on my goddamn door at 1.30 in the fucking morning? So, pretty pissed off, I stormed to the front door and yanked it open, ready to yell at whoever was ignorant enough to disturb my night. When I looked out, it was two children. A boy, probably around 8 years old, and a girl, 11 or 12. They both had their heads hanged down, looking at their feet. That's also when I noticed they were out in bare feet. Now, this is mid-November in Michigan, so anybody that doesn't know, it's cold. What the hell are you kids doing wandering around, pounding on people's doors in the middle of the night? In bare feet, I hollered. Them kids never did look up or anything, they just sat there. It sounded like the boy was crying softly. Well, I demanded. Please, sir, we're cold, the girl said quietly, still looking at her feet. That's also when I noticed their feet weren't even red or anything. Like it wasn't even cold or nothing. Well, no shit, you walking around in the middle of November in bare fucking feet. I was shocked and pissed off, so I wasn't the nicest person at the moment. Can we please come in? We're so cold, the little boy begged. They never did look up at me, and I never saw them black eyes. All right, yes, but you call your parents and have them come pick you up, understand? I said sternly. They both just shook their heads that they understood. Then they slowly walked past me into my home. This is when my life would change forever and I would live the most frightening half hour of my life. That's all it took, them damn kids. Once they got inside, I quickly walked past them and went straight for my phone. It was around the corner in the kitchen so I had to leave them out of sight for a minute. I grabbed it and quickly walked back to where I left them. Only they were gone. I looked around and couldn't find them anywhere. Kids, where the hell did you go? I shouted. It was at this point I realized just how quiet the house was. I could have sworn I left the television on, but yet, silence. It was an eerie quiet. Now, I was a grown-ass man, and at the moment, for some odd reason, I felt fear. It was the feeling, I guess, I can only describe as there was pure evil in this house, and I was just prey. Hello? I called out one more time. I once again was met with dead silence, so I decided I was going to go and look for him. I tiptoed through the kitchen into the living room, and just as I got to my couch, I heard the first scream. It was coming from upstairs, from one of the bedrooms. I never ran so fast in my life, all the while shouting my wife's name and then my kids. I knew that they were in danger, but in that moment I was thinking anything but them damn kids. I was just thinking about helping my family. I got to my wife's room first, and I never forget what I saw that night. It's be burned in my brain forever. When I opened the door, I saw my wife laying face down on the floor. There was blood everywhere. I ran over to her. But as soon as I got next to her, something pulled her under the bed from her feet. 
What the fuck? I shouted as I jumped back and landed on my ass. I heard crunching and snapping as her bones snapped repeatedly and I could hear chunks of flesh being torn from her. I ran as fast as I could and dove on the ground yanking up the bed sheets to try and... I don't know, save her I guess? Even though I knew it was far too late. When I pulled the sheets up she was completely unrecognizable. Her legs bent in weird position with huge chunks of meat just gone. Her face was twisted in an expression of pure agony and pain. Helen, I shouted, cried my eyes out. I was so upset I almost missed it at first. It was a pair of feet on the opposite side of the bed. My heart hit my chest with a force it never had before. I didn't even have time to react as those feet moved inhumanly fast straight out of the room towards the hall. I looked up and just caught a shadow running to where my kids lay sleeping. No, I shouted as loud as I could, jumping up, racing after them. It was too late, though. The door slammed shut, and I couldn't budge it. I screamed at the top of my lungs for them to open the door, but they wasn't having it. And there was no way I was getting this door open. So I quickly ran downstairs and called the police and tell them to get out there quick. A scream shouted through my body as I heard my own damn children facing the same fate as my beloved wife, and there was nothing I could do to stop it. I was hysterically crying as I ran back up the stairs to keep ramming the door. It was pointless. There had to be something against the door because it wasn't even close to giving in. Then after a minute, I heard completeless silence again, and I knew my babies were gone. At this point, he had to stop telling me the story and regain his composure. I was sitting, huddled up in the hallway, when I heard this door slowly creak open. I pulled my head from my knees and looked in horror at the shadow slowly approaching the doorway. My heart was racing so fast I was about to pass out. Just before I did, though, those two damn kids stepped out of the room covered in blood. They were smiling these awful grins, and that's when I got a look at their eyes. No white, just black. Like the devil's eyes himself were in those children. That's when everything went black for me, and I must have fainted because I woke up at the hospital to a whole frenzy of doctors and policemen bombarding me with questions. I told them what happened, but of course they didn't believe me. Would you? I wouldn't. So long story short, on that, they found me insane, and I've been here since. At this point, he was done telling me the story. So when I tell you, son, don't ever let those black-eyed kids in your home you listen, please. I must only be here today because the policemen scared them kids off. Or I'd be dead, too. Wish I was every day. He looked down and began sobbing again. I sat there in disbelief. I mean, here is this guy, sitting at a crazy home. So he had to just be insane, right? I'm not so sure, but I do know one thing for sure. If black-eyed kids show up at my house, they stay in the fuck outside.